Sacrifices like the UAW are the reason many are making a decent wage now. He's an advocate for the union, guys. If not for union, all jobs will be paying $10 an hour or be taken by illegals. Not true. The unions had um, a purpose or they served a purpose back in the day, but now they've been weaponized. Women had a purpose back in the day, but now they've been weaponized. You could say the same thing. Well, if not for women, then it wouldn't be no men here. They don't take away from the fact that we need to hold them accountable for what it is that they're doing today. They've weaponized their femininity in order to continue to hold men accountable on things that they didn't even do to them. Now they're telling you to be a, sip, a step baby daddy. They're out of their purpose. The union did serve a purpose at one point in order to progress and then fight for workers' rights in order for them not to die on the job. But now that we've progressed in society, the union is now outdated just like your family court laws. It's the same thing. The union was used in order to build the casinos and get the mob all of the money that they want and send out certain loans over there in Vegas. But you're not saying nothing about that, are you? You want to know the real history of unions and how it is that they've leveraged? Don't you know that all of these dudes, remember a year ago, remember two years ago when all of your union members and your union leaders was getting indicted because they were stealing money? Huh? You, you want me to bring back those stories? All of those dudes down there in Detroit and Chicago and over in New York that was getting indicted and they now was facing, but just because it went quiet, all of a sudden we still want to support the union. Listen, if you want the union to survive, because their membership is dwindling and people are starting to see exactly who it is that they are. They need to revamp, renegotiate, and then update themselves to be an advocate for business on the behalf of the worker in order for them to continue to be successful instead of just supporting exactly what it is that you think that they represented because yesteryear is gone. Today is a new day and the people are suffering and they're taking out loans at a 9% interest rate and then they got to go and get second jobs and they out there picketing and they tired. They tired. Don't sit here and tell me about the, what the unions have done. Tell the whole story. Tell the losses. Tell the wins. Tell what it is that they represented and tell what they've morphed into today. Because I don't see any of your union presidents or vice presidents or on a regional level, any of them taking anything as a pay cut in order to continue to advocate for the people. Leaders lead from the front, not from the back. Leaders lead from the front. They Maximus, not Commodus. Maximus, not Commodus. Leaders lead from the front. It's called service leadership, right? They on the front lines with the people. They fighting with the people. The people believe in them because they actually advocating for the people, not just what it is that they, they standing on the shoulders of giants. It's the same thing when I see it happen to the black community today. People keep referencing Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and all of the leaders of yesteryear when you literally are stealing from the people in order to make sure that they add value into your pockets and you want to go and do a tour pretending like you're doing something for the people when you really just finessing. You finessing. Keep on talking about how black you are. How many people you put the work in? Are you even taking care of your own family? They died for something in order for you to be something, but then you want to sit here and stand on the shoulders of giants and act like you black and be black just because of the color of your skin and not necessarily because of the merits of what it is that you stand for. Tell me what you really represent then. Tell me who you are. Listen, I have no respect, zero, zero of the people that stand on the shoulders of giants continue to get paid and talking about that they in the mire with them. Just hold on. Just hold on. We going home. Going home to van life. And then you're going to be over there in Philadelphia sleeping in your car with you and your kids and there ain't going to be nobody to be able to save you. Guess what? Where does solidarity go then? When they repossess your car and they take you and they, and they go and get your crib? How come the union is not sitting here advocating for and, 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 and forcing people to invest and continue to grow themselves so that they no longer are a part of the union? Any real leader don't even want you to continue to be in that same spot. As a leader, I would like for you to outgrow me. As a leader, I would like for you to be better than me. As a leader, if you still in the same spot that you was last year, still being a part of the membership and not necessarily becoming some, something that somebody can lean on that you can add value into, that's not real growth. That's not leadership. Even from a very, very simple perspective as far as your parents. A parent is supposed to want their children to do better. That's what leadership is. You're building the building blocks and you add value into them and you're teaching them so that they come after you when they're much better than, than you. 
You're supposed to make the pathway easier, not more difficult. If y'all still advocating for and still striking on the same principles that you was the last 30, 40, 50 years ago, then that's not really a union. That's a dying organization. That's why y'all membership is, is dwindling so much. You want to know why more black people than ever before are switching over to Republican? Because we were originally Republicans in the first place. But they leveraged, they leveraged these talking points in order to continue to market to you something that wasn't best for you. So they kept you in the mire so that you could continue to stay tethered to the thing that wasn't best for you in order for them to fatten their pockets. You think these leaders are actually there in order to make sure that you're doing well? Well, I guess that would be the same thing as the leaders that's going on in politics because they po they supposed to be public servants, right? Then how come they're not serving you? How come everything that they do is against you and not for you when they continue to tether you to the very thing that's not best for you? Listen, listen, listen. The thing that they should be advocating for is not 32-hour work weeks. The things that they should be advocating for is tuition reimbursement. The thing that they should be advocating for is tuition reimbursement, not 32-hour work weeks. How come they not educating y'all? How come they not partnering with the local community college schools in order to continue to get y'all to the trades? How come they not advocating for the tradesmen not just to get a higher a higher wage, but to educate y'all so that y'all can go off and then start your own businesses because most electricians, most plumbers, most pipe fitters, most of these people that then become tradesmen, they don't make the majority of their money in the plant. They make the majority of their money outside of the plant. How come they're not advocating for tuition reimbursement? How come they're not doing that? They continue to, to saddle y'all with the dumb stuff that's not best for you, but you keep thinking that they're working on your behalf because they keep telling you solidarity. Because they got a logo with a bunch of people holding hands next to it. And they still getting their paycheck. And they going to still be at the conferences. And they still going to be giving themselves raises and promotions. But they continue to tell you that they doing the thing that's in your own best interest. Because it's about the millionaires and the billionaires. The union. The union. I wonder if you didn't pay your union dues, if they didn't automatically tie your union dues coming out of your paycheck in order to be directly tied to going into their coffers, would they still work for you as hard as they did? The only reason that they're continuing to do this is because they're now trying to leverage this as a marketing point, and y'all are the fools. The members in the UAW is the guinea pigs. Because they're using this as a marketing tactic to then continue to try to unionize other places that's non-union. And they say, we're going to fight for the best wage for the people in order to market it to the other companies and the other, other shops that's non-unionized that's happy, but that's non-unionized because they can't get enough people to get hired in the companies that they now represent. And so in order to try to grow their ranks, they're going to try to convince other people. And y'all are the ones that's the marketing tool. You the, you the tool. You the fool. You the fool. You the pawn. You the fool. You the one that's going to suffer. You're going to get your car repossessed. Your kids ain't going to be able to have no Christmas. You're taking out 9% loans at a credit union that's then making you verify and making you look stupid in front of the membership. The other credit unions, and you ain't even a part of this credit union, so you got to go up there, look like a fool, go out there and beg for food, ask them to try to get you back to work. You the pawn, and they're using you as a marketing tool to go and unionize other shops, and you don't even realize it. See, you think that I'm the bad guy, but I'm just going to tell you the absolute truth. I'm going to tell you the thing that's the best for you. I'm not going to tell you the thing that's going to hurt you. You can disagree with me. But the one thing you can't disagree with is the truth. And the reason that I know it is because I've seen it. I've been a part of it. See, I'm not talking from a capitalistic perspective. I'm talking about it from a personal perspective. And that I've seen it from both sides. I've been on both sides of the fence. My first job was literally at the place where they popularized the assembly line, I worked at the Rouge. I was local 600. I've seen it on both sides. I know how they market into you. I know why they do the same runoffs and the same election processes as they do it for the politicians. I know that it's a popularity contest. I know that the majority of the resources that's being deployed when you guys are not off strike, in order to try to keep people that don't even want to have a job and they're not even showing up on time, they're spending more time advocating for the people that's a piece of trash instead of the people that's actually doing their job every day. They don't talk to you if you do your job every day because all they need from you is to continue to contribute into the coffers.
and you steadily falling for it. You fell for it the same way that your daddy fell for it, the same way that his daddy fell for it, and the same way that his daddy fell for it. You fell for it. It was hundreds of thousands of jobs up in Flint. Now there's less than 80,000 jobs up in Flint. When you going to realize that it's almost over? It's almost over. Everything is different. You have now become a modern day slave and you don't even realize it because you think that you're free because they continue to market it to you as the American dream and you have been sold out. You have been sold out for a dollar. And it's not even worth the paper that is printed on. At some point, you got to wake up. At some point, you're going to have to realize that you're the one that's being finessed. At some point, you're going to have to realize that the dream that you're being sold is really a nightmare and it's not best for you until you wake up. Wake up. Everything that you see before you is a marketing tool and a tactic. Everything. They had your sign pre-printed and made before they even told you that they was going on strike. If they was already negotiating in good faith, why did they have your sign already printed for you and, and, and handed to you before you even walked out? Why would they spend money making up this and putting this together if they didn't already have it in their agenda to not, not necessarily come to the table with good intentions in the first place? You don't see the play? And the more desperate you become, the easier it is to manipulate you because when you operate under duress, it's easier to be able to convince you to do something that's not in your best interest. So now you've really become a tool. You've really become a pawn. And really, 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 it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that I got to sit here and have you have you and have this conversation with you. And you don't even realize that you just a finesse. You are part of the union and I know more about your membership than you do. I know more about your bylaws. I know more about your membership. I know more about your leadership. I know who your vice presidents are. I know more about your locals. I know more about what it is that they're doing from a marketing perspective. I know when they're going on their next conference and their next retreat. I know when the next election is going to happen. I know what the union members and the union leaders and what it is that they're doing. they all buddy-buddy in the same boat together. I know who's holding hands and who's a part of the membership. Most of the time, you know who's already buzzing who down and who's going to work on whose behalf before you get there. It's all the same thing. You keep thinking that this is fighting on your behalf, but in reality, this is nothing but modern-day slavery in the form of politics that's using you as a pawn and the middle class is going away because you refuse to open your eyes, accept the truth, and then make the adjustment in order to do the thing that's in your best interest. Then guess who's going to suffer for it? Your daughter and your son because the kids are the ones that suffer for the transgressions of their parents because the parents are not doing the things that they're supposed to do. It's over. It's over. And you to play. Everybody know it but you. Leadership know it. The union know it. Ford know it. Chrysler know it. GM know it. I know it. Shareholders know it. The chairman know it. The board knows it. Everybody looking at you and we laughing. And you sitting up there with your sign talking about, yeah, solidarity. We all know you to play. And ain't nobody going to get less rich because you sitting there protesting. You just going to get more poor. Have you ever seen shareholders? Have you ever seen the board, the board members? Have you ever seen a hostile takeover? Have you ever seen a seat? Do you think that the seat? <laughs> you think we care about who's going to become president? We donate to both campaigns. I ain't, I ain't.